Is the 2023 season for the Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl or bust? We talk about that and so much more come up next here on Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire. We're here as always on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for being here on this Purple Friday, making us your first listen every day on Locked On Ravens. Free and available as always, all podcasts and platforms. You can also find us in video form on YouTube. So if you want to subscribe, you can do it for free, both in video form or in audio form. If you want to listen on your way to work one day in the car in audio form, then watch one day in video form. It's the same show, so you're not missing out on anything here. We're a five-day week Ravens podcast, so Ravens news analysis updates. Even in this low period of the offseason, we have you covered here. So you can tell a friend, tell a family member, we have you covered on Locked On Ravens. And we're almost done with the low period training camp just a couple weeks away. Really exciting, as I know we've all been waiting for just Ravens football to come back and here we have a really interesting episode. It's something I've wanted to talk about. And I just, you know, I didn't know when was the right time to talk about it, but I, th- I think it's okay to do it today. I want to talk about expectations a little bit for this Ravens team, not a full, you know, expectation episode, but in this first part of the show, I want to talk a bit about if this season 2023 for the Ravens is Super Bowl or bust. There is a lot of conversation about what should the expectations be this year for the Ravens with the roster, the coaching staff, et cetera. We'll talk about if those expectations should be sky high, Super Bowl or bust for Baltimore this year. Then in the second part of the show, there's been a lot of conversation about this. Who is wide receiver one for this team? I think we can narrow it down to either Odell Beckham Jr., or Rashad Bateman. Some people are on Odell's side. Others are on, on Rashad Bateman's side. I don't think there's a wrong answer, but I do want to talk about that and, and do a little conversation about that in the second part of the show. Finally, Marlon Humphrey, one of the best corners in this league, seems to be getting a little underrated by some people, even after having a great 2022 season. I want to talk about that in the final part of the show. So plenty to dive into today on Locked on Ravens. Let's first get into this. Really, I'd say it's an intriguing conversation if this season for the Ravens is Super Bowl or bust. Now, (laughs) you can talk about a lot of different things when it comes to the Ravens and and what their expectations should be. I think that within that organization, their expectation should absolutely be to win the Super Bowl. It's an organization that has prided themselves on success and winning Super Bowls. They've obviously won two over their very short franchise history. But I do want to first bring up the point of what my expectations are, at least what my minimum expectations. Because you, you can have your all goes well expectations, your worst case expectations. But to me, I want to give my baseline minimum expectation. And if you've been, if you're an everyday or you've been listening to me here on this show, you you know what mine is because it has been this for the past couple of seasons. And I just I want to see them get over this hump. To me, this season is not necessarily Super Bowl or bust, and I'll explain why here in a second. But it is definitely to me AFC Championship game or bust. Now the reason I say that, and <laughs> again, if you're an everyday, you've, you've heard me go on this spiel before, but I'm going to do it again because it's it's the same thing, but it's different this time around this year. The Ravens since 2012, 2013, okay, they have not made an AFC Championship game since then. Going over their playoff history over the course of the last 10 years or so, you know, 10, 11 years. Well, let's start after they won the Super Bowl, right? So they win the Super Bowl during the 2020-12 playoffs. 2013, they don't make it. 2014, they lose in a division around. That one was pretty heartbreaking. Then, you know, 2015, 2016, 2017, nothing, nothing there. 2018, they make it back to the playoffs. They lose to the Chargers in the wild card game. 2019, obviously that 14-2 season, they lose to Tennessee in the divisional round. 2020, they lose to the Bills in the divisional round. 2021, nothing. 2022, a wild card loss. Now, again, this is a team that predicates themselves on success, on Super Bowls, and they just haven't been there. And look, it is so, let let me say, it is so hard to win a Super Bowl, so hard to even get to the Super Bowl. It's so hard to win a championship. So much has to go right for an organization, you know, for the players on the field, the coaches, et cetera, to get to that point. But I think when it comes to the tenure of John Harbaugh and what he has done with the Ravens, the playoff success has not been there over the past 10 years for him. And usually, 
usually teams will cut bait with coaches who don't have the playoff success. Now, I think there are certain exceptions in across all sports. I think in the NFL, some of the things that come to mind, you know, John Harbaugh is one of them, Mike Tomlin, another one who hasn't won a Super Bowl in a long time. There's been a lot of conversation about Bill Belichick and kind of, oh, is it, is it time for New England to move on? Is it time for Bill Belichick to hang it up? That's a whole different conversation. I think John Harbaugh and Mike Tomlin are the two. And the thing that I say for the Ravens is why I say AFC championship, because I, I'm a very big, I'm very big on growth and not staying complacent, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Lamar Jackson's tenure. Let, let's just go from 2018 up to where we are now. 2018 in the wild card loss to the Chargers. Fine, right? You know, they, they make the playoffs Lamar's rookie season. Lamar brings them back. If they were four and five when Joe Flacco got injured, Lamar brings them back and they end up making the playoffs. They lose. Fine, right? You can swallow that because it was, you know, Lamar's first season. There was growth there. 2019 was more growth, I'd say, right? They went 14 and two. They they got the bye in the playoffs. Now they lost in the divisional round, but that is still growth going from wild card to divisional. 2020 playoffs, they lose in the divisional round again. But they win. They win the game against Tennessee in the wild card round. So they win a playoff game. That to me is growth. But then the past two seasons have been a couple of regression years. Now, injuries played a major role in both of those. I don't, I don't want to say they didn't. You know, 2021 was one of the worst injury seasons I've ever seen. And 2022 was better than 2021. Not any, Nothing could really be worse than that. But still, I think there were just a lot of expectations for those two teams in 2021 and 2022. And unfortunately just, you know, didn't come to fruition. Now with injuries, we know Steve Saunders and he is now out in Baltimore F minus as Kaji Esmaya likes to call him on this show. Hopefully health is a lot better this year for the Ravens, but what, what if it is and the Ravens still don't make the AFC championship game, what changes have to happen? We'll have, we'll have this conversation on another, another episode. We'll talk about John Harbaugh and, and the pressure on him for this year, but they've already fired both coordinators. I've made this point, you know, ad nauseum for this entire off season where they fired on Martindale last year, they fired Greg Roman, or I guess they part ways. I'll say it the way they did. They parted ways with Don Martindale and Greg Roman and that's the past two seasons where, you know, last year was Don Martindale and this year was Greg Roman. If the Ravens have another not so great year or a year below expectations, are, are you going to go back and do the same thing you did? Keep John Harbaugh around? Are you going to fire the special teams coordinator? With this team, I wouldn't put it past them because, you know, such a big part of what they do. So maybe that's all. Oh, it's the last coordinator fired. But I think to me, this is a big year for John Harbaugh. Because, look, you know, we, we can talk about feelings all we want to, right, where John Harbaugh has done so much for the organization. He has been a steady presence in the locker room, has changed his coaching style around. But with the roster they have this year, with, you know, the, the receivers they put around Lamar Jackson, a new offensive coordinator in Todd Munkin, if Greg Roman wasn't the problem, what is the – like, what – Greg Roman was a problem, right? Don't get me wrong. But if, if it wasn't the jump we, we expect from Greg Roman and Todd Munkin – Something has to change. AC championship game has to be the minimum expectation for this team, in my opinion. And the, the good thing about the Ravens this year, at least, in I guess moving forward for the next couple of seasons, as long as Lamar Jackson is there and in Baltimore in the Ravens uniform, the Ravens have a chance, right? They, they have a chance to win the Super Bowl as long as Lamar Jackson is in a Ravens uniform. But the thing that, that kind of you look at is some guys on the defense are getting older. Now, I will say, you know, Clay's Campbell, he was one of those guys. He is now out. Michael Pierce is getting older, but they still have a pretty solid young core. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, depending on, you know, his status at Afe Owe, et cetera. And on offense, you know, still a pretty decent young core. Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, you know, Rashad Bateman, Mark Andrews, and Ronnie Stanley, Tyler Linderbaum. They have guys. So just because the Ravens don't make or win the Super Bowl this year does not mean that, oh, they have to tear everything down. They have to rebuild because they still have multiple seasons of contention ahead of them, especially when they can continue to build around Lamar Jackson and have a very quality, hopefully what is a very quality defense. But I just, I need to see growth this year from them because I've, I've been begging for, for the past two seasons, this is going on year three, begging for the growth. And this is the third year in a row. I've said AFC championship or bust because it's under, it's a John Harbaugh led team. I want to see them because they have not won. They have not even gotten back to the AFC championship game since 2012. They haven't won a home playoff game since 2012. They've only hosted two home playoff games since 2012. 
So th- there are a lot of expectations around this team. And look, it's going to be hard. The, the AFC this year is so good. The AFC has so many talented teams. And if the AFC North could send three teams alone to the playoffs. But I'm, I am expecting a big year from the Ravens. I am hoping for a big year for the Ravens. Hopefully it can come to fruition for this team. So Super Bowl or bust, I'm not quite there because they still have multiple years of contention ahead of them. You know, if, if everything goes well and they can continue to keep their young core, guys are going to leave, right? There's no guarantee they keep Patrick Queen or J.K. Dobbins, et cetera, but they have enough, an, enough talent, I guess, locked down for a little while where they can contend and, and make the Super Bowl. So it's not like this is their last year to contend for a Super Bowl, but I just need to see growth for the for, for just the sake of seeing growth, honestly, at this point. No, not really, but just to make sure that there is growth happening in a John Harbaugh-led team here. But coming up in the second part of the show, we'll be talking about Odo Beckham Jr. and Rashad Bateman and talking about who is the wide receiver one for this team right now. So be sure to stay tuned. I'm planning to talk about on Locked on Ravens. But first, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, and I'm super excited about this one because I'm a big fantasy guy. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long, and and fantasy draft season is coming up. I got to start prepping my drafts. But whether you're prepping for a fantasy draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to be providing you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with that draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy picks of the week and today you know we've talked about Christian McCaffrey Justin Jefferson we're going Austin Eckler today I know there's been a a little bit of controversy when it comes to Austin Eckler and his contract situation but on the field we know Austin Eckler is one of the best running backs in the league I've tried to snag him in a couple of my leagues especially my dynasty one but when you're talking about the running back that scored the most touchdowns combined over the past two seasons, that is Los Angeles Chargers running back Austin Eckler. 38 scores since 2021. That is unbelievable. He's at a featured receiving role, and that makes him a guaranteed fit for the first overall pick in the 2023 fantasy football draft this year. You, you can't go wrong with a couple of these guys. Eckler, though, is really, really good. Eckler, he'll see his usual high leverage work as a runner, but he'll remain the focal point of the short passing game. And in those PPR leagues, you know that is very, very valuable. And so Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football, he's going to help you win your fantasy championship. The Bay Builders knows the championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. The same thing with your vehicle. With eBay guaranteed fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. They have air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights. They have it all. Alternators, shocks, struts, you name it. eBay Motors has them. They'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay guaranteed fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go with eBay guaranteed fit. Everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories to fit your vehicle, just look to the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fits. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. We're back here. Our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin on Striker still here with you. Purple Friday edition. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Making us your first listen each and every day. But let's talk about wide receiver one. It's been a topic of the conversation throughout the offseason because obviously Baltimore has signed Odo Beckham Jr. that one year up to $18 million deal, $15 million guaranteed. But Rashad Bateman is still in the fold, right? He was a player that the Ravens trusted as their wide receiver one last year, obviously with the whole injury situation, some drops that did not pan out. Now he showed flashes and potential. I love Rashad Bateman. I think he has all pro wide receiver one potential. That's a little bull, but I will say all pro wide receiver one potential. But now when you're talking about who who has like the wide receiver one title, There are a couple of things to keep in mind. One, I will say off the bat, I don't think like the wide receiver one title is as important as some people are making it out to be. But I I think either way, these these are two talented wide receivers. And I've I've kind of made this point before about the term starter or the actual like starting players in the NFL, unless it's like quarterback or kicker or, you know, corners or something. Usually it it doesn't mean as much to be a starter, let's say, in this league anymore because guys who aren't starters still get snaps, right? They're still able to get maybe 50, 60, 70% of snaps while not being actually listed as a starter because maybe the Ravens start two wide receivers, but then three get a ton of snaps because of the game plan. Or maybe a team starts three corners, but then they end up playing three linebackers or, or something along those lines. But let, let's first look at, you know, stats for Odell and Rashad Bateman. Obviously, Odell, a much more accomplished receiver 
over his time in the NFL. He's been playing in the NFL since 2014. And he he look, he he's put up the stats. He was obviously one of the best receivers in the league over his first three seasons in the NFL, 2014, 2015, and 2016. Over his career, 531 receptions, 7,367 yards, and 56 touchdowns throughout his nine years in the NFL. Now, obviously, did not play in 2022. Rashad Bateman, on the other hand, only two years in the NFL, has played in a total of 18 games in those two seasons. And he has put up 96 targets, 61 receptions, 800 yards, and three touchdowns. So based off of that alone, you'd say, oh, you know, this is an easy choice. Odell is. And to me, I... I go back and forth because we don't really know what version of Odell the Ravens are going to get right now, right? Is it going to be New York Giants prime Odell? Probably not. I've said they're probably not going to get that version. But if they can get anywhere close to a low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two, to me, I'm saying, hey, that's a a win for the Ravens 100% because you also have Rashad Bateman who if he can also be a low-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two, you know, that honestly already that's the best wide receiver group Lamar Jackson's already had, plus you add in Zay Flowers and Devin DuVernay, Nelson Aguilar, et cetera. Now, I tend to lean Odell as the wide receiver one right now just because of the, the, the veteranness of it. I'll, I'll give it to the veteran to start. But that's, look, that's just to start the season, right? We could be talking in, you know, week eight or week 10, and Rashad Bateman has cleared Odell in every category. And I say, yeah, you know what? I might have said Odell's the wide receiver one back in July, but Rashad Bateman's past him. He's the new wide receiver one on that team. And I don't think they necessarily care all that much, honestly. Like, as long as the targets are coming in, the receptions are coming in, yards, touchdowns, They'll be cool with it, right? You know, maybe one game Odell's going to get more catches than Rashad Bateman. Maybe the other game, you know, Rashad Bateman scores a touchdown more than Odell. But I think team success is important to both those guys. And I'm not saying they're going to completely disregard their individual success. I'm sure they still want targets and and yards and touchdowns. And with Todd Munkin coming in, there's going to be more of that to go around. So still, while, while I say that Odell to me is the wide receiver one of this team right now, that doesn't mean that Rashad Bateman is, oh, he's he's bad, he's not good, he's a wide receiver too, he's second fiddle. There are going to be games where Odell, you know, is, is off, where Odell doesn't have a good game, and someone else has to step up, and that is going to be Rashad Bateman. We've seen Rashad Bateman with the ability to run routes, break, break ankles. Also, the ability as a three-level wide receiver. It's one of the things I've talked about with Zay Flowers, right? A three-level wide receiver, I think that, Rashad Bateman has that ability too. Now the drops have been an issue for him over the first two years in the NFL. Obviously the health as well. Health is going to be key for both of those guys, because when you talk about wide receiver one, you know, if Odell misses half the season and Rashad Bateman plays the whole season, Rashad Bateman, I think then becomes the wide receiver one. If, if Odell plays the whole year, Rashad Bateman misses some time, then, you know, and it does depend on like, you know, who is playing better. But to me, I think that the term wide receiver one for a team means less than it does in, let's say, fantasy football, right? That That's a little different where, oh, you know, this guy is putting up wide receiver one production. But at the end of the day, if both guys are eating, both guys are, are doing well for the Ravens and, and they're both happy, I don't think they care, you know, who is the wide receiver one on the depth chart. I would expect Odell to be the wide receiver one on the depth chart when the first depth chart drops. I don't know exactly when that'll be. I'm sure it'll be soon. But I'd expect because Odell's the veteran, he'd be the wide receiver one. But maybe, I don't know, maybe the Ravens say, oh, Rashad Bateman's been with the team longer. It's his third season with the Ravens. Maybe that's what it's going to be. So I'm I'm excited to see both these guys, you know, Rashad Bateman coming back, obviously, and then Odell his first year with the Ravens. This offense is going to be electric. I I don't know. I can just feel it in my bones, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds for him. Coming up in the final part of the show, though, we're going to be diving a bit into Marlon Humphrey. Is he is he underrated? What, what's going on with Marlon Humphrey right now? So be sure to stay tuned. Plenty to talk about on Lockdown Ravens. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. And Bird Dogs make you look good. And I know I have a couple of pairs of Bird Dogs. And I, I wear them all the time. I literally, you know, around the house going going out and doing things. They have a lot of flexibility that I love. And, you know, I have them, I have them in a couple different colors, too. So it's not like I'm wearing the same color every time. I, I really like it. And... I don't know. It's a really good thing to have in your closet. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and the leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. And they fit way better than regular shorts that are made of that stiff, restricting cotton. I value the freedom of movement. So to have that freedom, Bird Dogs does a great job with that. And they fixed the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs use the anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry 
all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash lockdown NFL or enter promo code lockdown NFL for a free Eddie style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash lockdown NFL or promo code lockdown NFL for a free Eddie style tumbler, which the, the Eddie style tumbler looks incredible, by the way. You got to get in on that. You won't want to take your bird dogs off, we promise you. We're back here, our final segment, Locked on Ravens. Rounding out Purple Friday here. Kevin Oshaker still here with you. I hope everybody has a bunch of great weekend plans set up because we were over 4th of July week. We're done with that. We're now headed into training camp, at least in a couple weeks. I I cannot wait for it to get started. And we're going to have the coverage for you during training camp. And, of course, we're going to start up our live shows again. You know, obviously, if the Ravens make a move, we'll have live shows. But every game day after the game, we'll have live shows here on Locked On Ravens. Also, preseason, that's the same exact thing. So it's it's an exciting time as football is almost back. But let's talk, let's talk Marlon Humphrey now for the Ravens. And kind of is his underrated nature. It kind of feels like he's been underrated, which is crazy to say, because to me, he is at least a top five cornerback. He's established himself as one of the best at his position. And it just, I don't know. It seems like people don't respect him enough for what he has done in the league. You know, we can quickly go over his stats here. He's someone who is known to force fumbles, right? He Fruit punch. We, we know that. Somebody who is, is always around the football and trying to force turnovers. Came in the league in 2017 as a first round pick. The Ravens had some pretty good, like, you know, Ronnie Stanley was 2016, Humphrey was 2017, Lamar was 2018, Marquise Brown was 2019. They've had some good first round picks, you know, over the course of the last, you know, seven, eight or so years here. But Marlon Humphrey, since 2017, he's played in the league six seasons here, and he's been a player for them. You know, he's had... 281 solo tackles, 347 combined. I mentioned those forced fumbles, 13 of them, including eight in 2020. That was a league high and was close to a record. Honestly, 12 interceptions as well. Hasn't had over three interceptions in a season. Actually tied his career high in 2022 that he also had in 2019. But he's somebody that is so valuable to the Ravens defense. One of their 100% building blocks and, and cornerstones on that side of the ball but still just has not been getting the respect that, you know, I, I believe he deserves here. And there, there was an article by Sam Monson of pro football focus. And it, it was back in May, you know, 2023, right, right before June started. And it, it started to pick up some attention. Now I think it got attention back then, but it also is just started picking back up again because Marlon Humphrey's rating on this list is so low. I mean, 20th, he was ranked 20th by Sam Monson in terms of best cornerbacks in the league, which is just unreal. And some of these guys who are like, you know, some top guys in the league, Sauce Gardner, Jalen Ramsey, Darius Slay, Patrick Sertan, Jair Alexander, Stephon Gilmore, Marshawn Lattimore, Trayvon Diggs, JC Horn, like fine. Like those guys are top cornerbacks, but I'm not, I'm not putting Stephon Gilmore over Marlon Humphrey, right? I'm, I'm not putting some of these guys over Marlon Humphrey. But then you have guys like Jamel Dean, Javarius Ward, A.J. Terrell, James Bradbury, Denzel Ward, Jadavius White, Tariq Woolen, Xavier Howard, Jadobi Awuzie, Sean Murphy Bunting. That's just, uh, come on. You, you can't do that for Marlon Humphrey. I mean, He's he's too good. He's been too good. Not only not only is he you know the physical force fumble type of guy in coverage. He's locked down. Barely allows touchdowns. And look, 2021 for Marlon Humphrey was not a great year for him overall. Obviously, we know the 200 yard Jamar Chase game. He got burned on multiple occasions. And he said himself, you know, he's looking to bounce back in 2022. And he did it. He had a, he had an incredible bounce back year. And I still think I don't think he got credit for it, which is crazy to me. Because he established himself as a guy who could play in the slot and on the outside at an elite level. Now, you want to keep him on the outside just because I think he is better there. Not that he's not good in the slot, but I just think his skill set is better for the slot. But he's a player that you just – you if, if teams were rebuilding a defense, right? Marlon Humphrey, to me, would be on my first team all defense if, if you're talking about that. My, my favorite corners in the league, my favorite slot guy is Mike Hilton. But Jair Alexander – and Marlon Humphrey to me, th- those are my guys at corner. I would love for the Ravens to get Jerry Alexander. I think that's a, it's a different conversation that we're not going to talk about that. But let, let's say Marlon Humphrey gets, you know, he gets injured and he's done for the season, which hopefully does not happen. Knock on wood. It would be it would be disaster. And the Ravens don't have anything necessarily really close to what Marlon Humphrey is. And honestly, not a lot of teams do. The fact that Marlon Humphrey was rated 20th on this list People seem to be talking down on him a little bit. And, and Marlon Humphrey talked to the media before minutes where minicamp let up. 
and had a really insightful answer pretty much about what his goals are, like if he has individual goals. And he said for him, it's just about accomplishing to feel like you're one of the best in the league. And, you know, he feels like he knows the passing league. And so if you can defend the pass, you're going to have a pretty good chance. And he knows if he can play his best football, the Ravens have a really good chance at winning football games. And he talked about his dad, who was Bobby Humphrey. And, you know, he played in the Super Bowl and, you know, He's trying to get out of the footsteps of that, but be on the other side of that, not losing the Super Bowl, but winning it. So his individual accomplishments, he said, oh, yeah, that's great. And, you know, you can have Pro Bowls and all pros and interceptions and stats and whatever. But for him, he wants to be able to play his best football and give his team the best chance of winning. So he's a team guy. Obviously, look, we know him as this, like, you know, really funny personality, someone who is honestly one of the more unique personalities throughout the entire NFL but he's a player that, you know, he's bought into the Baltimore culture. He loves Baltimore. And when he does get serious, not, not only about playing football, when he gets serious about playing football, which he is, he's great. But, you know, when it comes down to it, a very humble guy, someone who honestly probably has a sports media career following him after his playing career, but is on track right now to become one of the best cornerbacks in Ravens history, which is, you know, they, they, the Ravens have had some good cornerbacks walk through that door. So it's a very tall task, but I still think that, the fact that we're seeing some of these guys rated over Marlon Humphrey. And look, I'd say top five up for debate for me, you know, Jalen Ramsey's in that conversation, you know, Patrick Sertan, Dre Alexander, Darius Slay, but Marlon Humphrey's in that conversation too. Sauce Gardner to me, I want to see another year. He was again one of the elite corners in the league last year. Don't get me wrong, but I probably put him at six. Then you have other guys like Marshawn Lattimore and Javon Diggs and all those guys, JC Horn. But I just think the Marlon Humphrey disrespect, not even have him in the top 10, not even have him in the top 15, which is which is crazy. I don't know. Humphrey's a guy who deserves respect. And look, if he's, if he's not getting it now, you know, whatever. Pro football focus and the Ravens have had kind of, it's honestly been kind of a rivalry, right? With Patrick Queen's grades and J.K. Dobbins and his grades. And now we have Marlon Humphrey in his ranking here, which again, this was back in May, but it did get picked up a little bit. So I, I just wanted to talk about it a little because I think that for Humphrey, he's a guy who deserves to have that respect put on his name. And I think he will, again, prove it to the Ravens and prove it to the NFL and prove it to everybody watching that he is one of the best corners in this league. But that's all I have you here today on Lockdown Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Again, be sure to subscribe, video form, audio form. It's free anywhere you get your podcasts. When we get back here on Monday, more Ravens talk from us as we creep closer and closer to training camp. So be sure to stay tuned for that. I'll see you right back here on Monday on Lockdown Ravens.